promised the people of Zambia was to create more jobs. The biggest question till now still remains to how many jobs has the PF created? For many Zambians, the help for earning an income leans heavily on being able to secure employment. While Zambians have the option to engage in entrepreneurship activities, the uncertain income of entrepreneurship, the difficulties in raising startup capital, especially for the youth, and the general lack of capital is one of the biggest issues that the youth are facing tonight, or should we say uh, today. The big question is, who uh, has the solutions to Zambia's high levels of unemployment right tonight on uh, this edition of the assignment. I feature National, National Restoration Party President, that is Mr. Stephen Yerina, to discuss many challenges and subsequent solutions to Zambia's unemployment. President Yerinda, good evening and uh, welcome to the assignment. Andrew, good evening. Good evening, viewers outside there. Zambia is for Zambians and only Zambians will develop this country. Those joining the conversation on the Movie TV Plus, Bouquet Channel 1, the Movie TV Decoder Channel 104, you'll be able to come through and give us your contributions via the number that is scrolling down your TV screen. Yet those that are joining the conversation from across the continent of Africa, you're joining us live on our Facebook page, Ask Movie TV, our YouTube pages, Ask Movie TV. You can join the conversation on those two particular platforms online and give us your contributions and your comments regarding this very important topical issue that borders on national interest. Now, really, uh, we do know for a fact, like I did mention in my preamble, that unemployment, you know, is one of the biggest challenges that we're facing as a country. Currently, we're standing at about 11.41% of the rate of unemployment. Why? First of all, uh, Andrew, let me uh, explain about myself uh, to the viewers outside there. I've heard a lot of people when they call me, they say, oh, Nirenda, you are an amateur in politics. Yes, I'm an amateur in politics of insults, in the politics of no vision, in politics of hatred, in the politics of tribalism, I am an amateur. But in the politics of visionary politics, in making leadership that will bring Zambia to sanity, prosperous, I am a professional guy. I am the guy. So let's come back to the uh, employment. Now let me explain and you will see how NAREP is going to create jobs for every Zambian in this country. <clears throat> First of all, when uh, you talk about uh, jobs creation, there's a word creativity inside. Creation, creativity. If you look at our country, our country uh, is not a creative country. And that is because of the leadership. A creative country creates, first of all, think tanks. Think tanks are created. You start, first of all, by developing elite schools. In those elite schools, you've got different people from dis different sectors, from engineering, from other jobs, and so on and so on. Now, I'll characterize the job creation. Mm. The job creation, we will look, dissect it, myself, I dissect it in, into four parts. The first one being the notar, notariate sector. That's a sector in the civil service, in all these government agents and so on and so on. The second one is intellectual property. In intellectual property, there's a lot of employment. The export of technology, export of intellectual invisible products. It export of even the music. Uh, with that, when we're talking, I'll come back to it. Mm. The third one is service. The service industry, where now you're talking about tourism and so on and so on. The fourth one actually being goods, the sector that has got tangible goods. That's where now you're talking about the agricultural sector, the processing industry, the, 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 the mines, and so on and so on. Those are, so I will come back, first of all, to notar. And I won't say much about the notar, notariate. Notariate, I said the civil service, and so on and so on. These jobs, they are being 
complemented actually by other sectors that have meant. If the other sectors are doing very well, you will have more money that the government is going to collect. Then the government can employ more teachers. The government can employ, employ more other uh, uh, policemen, more soldiers, more, and so on and so on. Mm. They will have liquidity. But uh, now, if these other sectors are not productive, there's total, total collapse of the economy as we are today. They are not complemented. I'll give examples as I move. Let move, me move now next to the intellectual property. If you're talking about intellectual property, let me talk about a musician. A musician, a Zambian musician, if they're going to get a Nigerian guy to come here, they pay him a million dollars to come here. $500,000. A Zambian musician does not even see $500, 500 in itself. But applied it today, perhaps 10,000 kwach. He doesn't see it. You know, so how are you developing? I will give you this an example. I happened to be, I happened to be at these ceremonies like uh, uh, um, uh, marriage ceremonies and so on and so on. Most of the music that is played there is not even Zambian. We say Zambia for Zambians. How are you going to promote these Zambians if actually you don't buy their products? Ourselves, when I was growing up myself, Kaunda said 75% of the music played in every TV station, every radio, every TV station, there was, there was only one anyway, is going to be Zambian. What happened? We had the likes like the Pongos being rich. We had the likes like the Ricky the Longas. The, 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 the five devotions, and so on and so on. And people enjoyed, the Zambian music developed. There were so many people who were employed, they could also employ others. All that has been killed. That's intellectual property. The sale of technology. I want to tell you, and a, a, a company like, a, a country like Israel, Taiwan, they have no land. They have almost nothing. Taiwan has got rock and what salt water. But what do they do? They are selling the intellectual property. That's what I talked about. If we started with grade one to have these intellectual schools, schools, elite schools, where we build these people from different uh, angles. Right up now, we are talking about disaster management. As I'm saying, these private other things I've talked, mm. they complement notarial jobs. Now let me look, surely, you sit there and always command the disaster management. Eh? These guys, they're a joke. For me, they're a joke. There's so much money that we can save from that sector. One, if the intellectual property that we don't develop is done, we'll develop softwares that, they will, tell, that will tell us where people can settle and where people cannot settle. What to do in certain areas. You develop softwares that suit us. But now, it's all people go and build in areas where they are not supposed to build. Next is disaster. Next, Vanyamula Vintu had disaster management. People go to plant certain crops that cannot grow in certain areas because they don't know, they don't have the knowledge. There can be softwares that you develop that you know that in this area of Zambia, you can grow tobacco. In this area of Zambia, you can grow rice, and so on and so on. All these things, we need to see them. We're not seeing them. I'm talking about technology. I'm talking about intellectual property. Develop softwares and sell those softwares to our people and also export them. Now, I'm coming to the third. Mm. said where I said the service industry. Let me talk about tourism. The tourism in Zambia today, almost over 70-80% is in the hands of the white man, the hands of the Indian Asian man, uh, Zambian Asian Zambian man or whatever you want to call them. They're in the hands of most foreigners. The money that they get from there, they are stuck outside. If us, what we are going to do, we are going to make sure that we empower the local people who live there. And these local people must run the, the tourism industry. They will appreciate. They will know that's where they are eating, they are eating from. 
Not you are getting somebody from Lusaka to go to somewhere lower Zambezi to go and put it and get those people peanuts and get somebody from South Africa to come and crop our animals. When actually we can crop our animals ourselves and that meat from there, the locals can make use of it. It's not there. So we ourselves in Inarep, what we are going to do to make sure that we empower the youth, the local people there, we'll give them skills, we'll give them the understanding, the training in the tourism sector to make sure that these people can run their local industry and appreciate it and value it and keep it properly. If you are coming to my village, you are coming from Lusaka. You are telling me, don't kill this animal. And me, I've been feeding on this animal every now and then. I don't understand why you are telling me that. I will still find a way of killing it. But if I'm living with it, it's mine. I treasure it. That's why I feed my children. I take my children to school. Everybody have developed that area. They will protect it themselves. You don't even need the so many people of Zawa. You have Zawa, huge, huge amount of banners you are paying to Zawa, but you are profiting nothing. The money is taken by the white man, by the Indians, and is stuck in New York, it's stuck in, in London, and then it. You don't run a country like that. Well, that's... Yeah. Now, let, let me finish. You asked, I, I talked about four sectors. I am now on the service industry, hmm. right? Yes. So, or you want to ask me a question on the same uh, service industry? Well, uh, there's, 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 there's a lot of questions that I want to ask you, but you can finish so that I, 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 you know, I, I put everything together. Yes. As, as you explain. So, I'm talking about, I was talking about tourism and how of we course. are going to do in tourism. Mm -hmm. The other thing that this government is not doing in tourism, they are not marketing it. Nobody knows. If you get, you go into the world, uh, I, I travel a lot, um, I have never seen an advert of, from Zambia that is showing um, uh, uh, the Victoria Falls, for example. There's many well, that we can, we have so many all over. But just the famous Victoria Falls, I've never seen on any of the airports. What you see is South Africa says, come to us, we'll show the Victoria Falls. Zimbabwe is saying it. There is nothing from Zambia. I'll give you an example, for example, of Dubai. Dubai, they have oil and the salty water and sand and perhaps the camels. But today their income is more than 50% more than of their income is from tourism. They have nothing. We have everything. They are advertising every, every uh, 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 um, um, airport you go to. Every big hotel you go to, Dubai is being advertised. What about us? Nothing at all. So we will make sure that we spend more money in the marketing of tourism. I will move now. Uh, uh, if you allow me, I can course, move now can to move production to of mm. goods and services. I talked about th four things. I said notarial, notarial jobs. I talked about intellectual, uh, uh, intellectual sector. I talked about the service sector. Now I'm talking about goods and production. These goods and production, they are mostly in three parts. You find them in the agricultural sector, it is in the mining sector, it is in the production of goods and services. Now, surely, uh, I keep on singing this song. We Zambians, we don't own anything. We don't. I will give you an example of certain things that are happening right up now hmm. uh, in, in, our, in our country. There is nothing that we are producing. I went somewhere where I was doing a project. I found literally a lot of custom. Castor, we call it in our language, is mono. Mm. But if you go in shops, all the castor oil, we import it. Castor is not difficult to grow. It grows anywhere, world, and so on. Where, why can we in agriculture produce castor and, castor and then make castor oil, which has got multiple uses in medicine, in, in what, in drinking, in so much, and so on and so on. But we import castor from the Asian country, from Europe from America, surely, is that, is that, I don't know jobs. I don't want to talk about big things first. I want to start with the small things. Hmm. I talked about the creativity, that we are not a creative. creative in, we are still in production of goods and services. Hmm. But, but clearly, look at you, all, Yerenda, you, you, you agree with me if you look at statistics from, you know, from the past decade. Unemployment rate has been reducing, though at a very minimum. 
uh, state. If you look at the rate of unemployment that we're at in 2019, I think we reduced, about, we reduced by a figure of 0 0.4 uh, for us to reach at 11.41%. Not okay. a huge, no, 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 not, not a huge difference, mm -mm. if you ask me. But, but one of the issues, very mm -mm. critical, President Nyerenda. It doesn't reduce. Let me correct you there. Very minimal. No, well, not even statistics. minimal. When, 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 when statistics say when PF were taking over, the employment was the uh, uh, employment unemployment rate was at seven point something, right? Yes. Yes. Today they are getting out of uh, of government after ten years. It is at eleven. Is that reducing or increasing? If you look at the population against the, 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 the unemployment rate, no. you, you significantly look no, at no, no, no. You know, the, 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 the reduction. But my question uh, uh, to no, you... No, no, no. On that one first, let's mm. be on that. And I want to clearly show how... I am not a person who points fingers for nothing. I want to clearly show you how the PF government has failed to do their prom prom promise that they are going to create employment. They have the, the employment around 20, uh, 2012 when they took over, it was 7.8 percent. 7.8 percent, yes, around translated to around above 4 million. Mm. Today, we are at about 11 point something, yes, translated around 6 million, uh, 600,000. Mm. So that means it has grown. Now, why I'm, I'm, I'm disputing to say it shouldn't be like that, yes, it's the planning. I always talk about a vision and a leadership that has got a plan and a vision. Mr. Mansa, you are not married. The day that you get married, your income has to change. Your expenditure has to change. The day that you are going to have one child, everything has to change, has to go up. Unless you haven't planned, it will go down. And the result will be people now uh, 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 divorcing, the divorce rate going down because you will not have money to feed your child, you will not have money to feed, to feed your, your what, your, 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 your wife. And this is what happen, is happening in this country today. They have failed to create employment. Now let me tell you about our song, our song in, in Narep, which I'm so proud of. We will give a job, job to every Zambian will have even deficit of manpower. We will import manpower from outside to come and work But for that's us. not possible, <laughs> President. That's not oh, well, practical. But look, even, practical, even, even the country that you grew up in, Germany, the, the employment rate there is about 4%. And very now, developed. Now, let me tell you, Zambia is bigger than Germany. Perhaps two times or three times, if I'm not here. Zambia is far much bigger than Germany in terms of territory. Zambia has got all the wealthy that German has. They don't have even coal to burn, to create. They have just pieces of land which is already gone. German has got over 100 million, if I'm going to put uh, foreigners as well. We are 20 million. If you are talking, you, 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 when you want to compare, compare apples to apples. Don't compare apples to a cup of maize. No. In this case, if you are saying unemployment is there, is there in Germany, yes, but everybody who is unemployed, he gets money from the state, if he just files, or gets money from the labor office, cash, put on your table. The first, in Germany it works like that. Let me tell you, if I'm working today, I'm getting 10,000 kwacha. The first year that I'm unemployed, I'm going to get 75% of my salary, 7,500. The second year that I'm not employed, I'll get 50% of my salary. The whole year, which is 5,000. The third year that I'm not employed, I'll get 25%, which is 2,000. After the third year, which is the fourth year, they will tell you, Sibwana, what are you doing? We are releasing you now, you go to social. So the social, the government will take care of you. They give you a chance. Three years, they are paying. That's how it works. If everything is there, that is running, mm. that is running, that is focused, that is visionary. And that's a country, I'm telling you, that has nothing but intellectual property. It's the world uh, export uh, mechanic, machinery, ex it's the world number one export of machinery. What? It's because they have made their own people. They have done Germans for Germans. 
First of all, they will, matter, they will make sure that Germans have got the jobs. Germans have got those companies, and so on and so on, if you compare with German. Unfortunately, it's a country that I know very well as it is in my palm. I know German the way I know Zambia. So I'm, 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 I'm telling you to say, we need to create Zambias for Zambians. I'm, I'm very happy that the PF government, the Republican government, yep. uh, uh, is understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> you understand more. I'm speaking to you, Mr. President. Change. Follow what we are talking. We have seen you are following as you got the minds. Now let's find out what next and how do you do with it. Of course. Um, if you look at statistics for 2012 yes. and uh, from the Central Statistics Office, the the public sector employed about 200,000 people, over 200,000 people. Yes. The, the, the private sector employed over 5 million people. All right. Mm -hmm. You talked about you know the four pillars in which you are going to create employment. You talked yes. about the um, you know the the civil services. The civil service that you talked about. The, yes, the, the third notar one. Jobs. No, no. The the the, 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 the notar jobs. You talked about goods and production. You talked about the second, the third one that talks it's, the intellectual. It's intellectual. No and matter then, you've got the notariat uh, sector, you've got the intellectual sector, and then you've got the service industry. The service industry, yes. of course. Where tourism, for example, falls. Falls. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's not related to what I, the question I'm about to ask. But then, well, we do know for a fact that the biggest employer is the private sector. How will you ensure that, you know, an environment is more conducive to ensure that the private sector still swallows as many people uh, as it could? And it, also, it, how, what, are your, what are your plans to expand? Uh, unfortunately, in the countries like most African countries, like Zambia, the biggest employer is not the private sector. And that's where the problem is. The biggest employer in Zambia is the government. So I am saying, I, I don't know, let me repeat your question. For that well, the, 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 clearly the private sector is the biggest employer because if you look at uh, statistics from the central you know, statistical office as of 2012, uh, the, the, the private sector swallowed about over 5 million you know, uh, you know, people you know, in the private sector. Uh, the, the public sector swallowed oh, about 200,000 people. That clearly shows that I, the I, private sector are you talking is about the biggest. Formal or informal employment? In, in, those in, in the private sector. Yes, all right? formal or an informal employment? That is both formal and informal. Okay. All right. So your question? My, my question is how will you ensure that the environment is much more conducive, especially for the private sector, uh, that, uh, you know, that is employing more people to ensure that more people are actually employed when you form government? But, uh, but also, how will you ensure that you expand? the civil service to ensure that more people are captured in the civil service. Yes, okay. I, 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 when I was explaining about these are three private areas with the notariate jobs, when, when the other three, when the private grow, hmm. automatically people are living well, they are paying more taxes and so on and so on. That means the pocket of the government also swells. That means the government can absorb more teachers, more doctors, and so on and so on. Is that clear? So you are now swelling the employment of uh, uh, civil servants automatically from the taxes. Now, if you don't have enough money coming from the private sector, from those people who are paying uh, uh, taxes, you will now have the situation which we have today, that you have so many teachers that you have trained, you cannot employ them. You've got so many and uh, many uh, people that you cannot pay. You will delay for four months and so on and so on, not to pay. And that now is characterized to what we are going to talk later. This, ourselves, we will make sure that the environment is conducive, first of all, to answer you. We will create jobs district for district. I will tell you one, one thing, for example, which the government is struggling with, the power, the energy. This energy, if the government creates jobs district for district, in every district, those are capable. You, you create energy for that particular area. We have resources. There are so many water, uh, waterfalls all over. So in certain areas, you mm. create that. You, create, you start generating electricity in southern province, which is already there, but in other districts. Create in eastern province. Create they will have their local generation of power. They will have their local uh, ZESCO or ZES Eastern or ZES Western and things like that. Mm. The way they have done the water services. You will find that 
Each person will manage his own power. And therefore, the sector will grow. The people around there, they will grow in that sector. In another one is what I sing every now and then. As I was talking about tourism, empower the local people to run the tourism sector. Those that are living in Rwanda, teach them, bring them up to make sure that they are the ones who have it. That's how it is in other developed countries. They will appreciate it. That is leveling the ground. Don't tell people because the, I have applied here from Lusaka, I live here, Abu Mr. whatever, uh, white man, I go and run the South Rwanda, I put Kaloji Kuja, Kenang Kenang. When people are coming, the money is, is, is stuck somewhere else. This is what is happening. So leveling the ground is not what they are talking about now. They haven't leveled the ground. Let the ground be leveled so that this empowerment is in the hands of the Zambians. The Zambians need to have it. The Zambians need to feel it's theirs. And this is what we don't have. The economy of this country is in the hands of the foreigners. As long as it does not change, we are going to be slaves if we are not slaves already. I pity, when I look at you young people mostly, I pity. I, you know, the government takes $40,000 or $20,000, gives you, Kapena, uh, you are a musician, you are singing a song of the local government or the government, you are singing their song, they give you $40,000, you feel good, you go and eat that money, tomorrow you are on the street, tomorrow you have problems. Don't do that. And this is what I'm seeing. At that particular, right up now, I'm telling you, there's a lot of money that is being offloaded by the current yes. government. But, but also there's, there's a lot of money that is going in people's pockets, uh, Mr. Nyerenda. Today, because in, in a few people's pockets, um, those uh, that are, are partisans to the ruling party. Mr. Nyerenda, if you, if you visit most of the parts of this country, you realize that there's construction going on. And for that construction to, to, to finish up, there are people who are supposed to work on the construction. Right here in Lusaka, I think almost everywhere you go, what, now there's heavy traffic. There's heavy traffic. There's construction of roads, there's construction here of schools. Lusaka. Obviously here in Lusaka. Yes. You know, and if you look at statistics from the you know, CSO, they will tell you that the biggest, uh, between the rural and the urban, yes. the, the biggest area where you find high levels of unemployment is the urban area. Yes. And the PF are developing the urban areas, <laughs> Copa Belt Province and Lusaka. <laughs> You, you, you agree with me, President Yenne, that there's, there's, there's a lot of construction going on, all right? You know, uh, infrastructure development going on. That means that people are working on those infrastructures. Yes. People are working on the roads, people are working on the schools and everything. Can't you appreciate, even in the minimum sense, Mr. Nyerenda, that there's some level of work in terms of job creation? It is temporal, you know, you know jobs, but indeed people yes. are, are being employed. Uh, now, let me tell you this. I'll give you an example. Mr. Mwansa, you have got only uh, 300 kwacha in your pocket. 300 kwacha. And that 300 kwacha, in front of you, there's a door that is broken, or perhaps your, your house has got no paint. You have only 300 kwacha, and you've got two children there. Are you going to take that 300 kwacha and go buy a bag of cement and paint your house? or buy some, some other things to fix your door? Definitely not. First, you make sure that your children have got the basic need. Their, their stomach is failed. You make sure that, first of all, you, 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 you take your children to school, you feed them, and everything you got, they have medicine, and there you look at other things. And this is, you just compare. I want to compare with the Western world. Other people, I laugh at them. Lusaka now is looking like New York, it's more than Jobbeck. I laugh at my young man, the local government minister, I laugh at him. I don't know whether he's been to New York or to Jobbeck, I don't know, then when he compares. Lusaka is not Zambia, and Zambia is not Lusaka. We have areas every day we see, just go over to Kanyama there, walk to Kanyama. People cannot sleep, man, water is above the knees. Go to Mrs. right up now. The, 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 the water is about above the knees. In Kanyama, there are more than 40,000 voters. In Mississippi, in Mrs. there and Chawama and so on, there are more than perhaps also more than 40,000 voters. And you are telling them to say, I have developed you by putting in front of you this bridge. Whilst the people are suffering, they are catching diseases. 
they cannot sleep. They can't have even where to put their mille meal, if ever they have that mille meal. The toilets are just, they just stand up, they do the toilets, because those toilets are those plumes toilets where, yeah, so you just imagine all over is water, everything is coming up. What about those diseases? Mm, but you know, those it, people that are, no, 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 I'm yeah. coming to your answer. Okay. You are asking me whether I'm not appreciating what they have done. I want to say uh, things that I see. I want also to tell you to say in my uh, when I go on radio or on TV where I am, I commend them to say first of all there is security in this country. I can walk into this place and walk outside and feel good. I'm free. This is the work of the government. It's not without. I feel free. I sleep at my home. I wake up. If there was no security in this country, you can well not walk. I know countries like the way I'm talking now, I will not walk outside. So I commend them for that. I also commend them that they have built a lot of schools, but they don't have teachers. Because these things that I've talked about, they are not harmonized. If you pre you have got a vision, you will harmonize these things and you build schools with the teachers. It's what we call planning. When I say that this government has got no vision, no integrity, no principles, no sense of sacrifice. All these four, I can explain as to what I mean. I can, without pointing fingers at anybody, I can explain as to why we don't have jobs. I can explain why the town is full of youth. And these youth, they are, they are used. Now you have got hatred between the two parties on top there. They hate each other. Politics should not be hatred. Politics is diversity of thinking. I think like that, you think like that. Put it together, you have a better solution. Not fighting, not insulting, not pointing at each other. And this is why I challenge this government. Ask me, I will give you the solution for free because I want Zambia to be better. For me, if Zambia was better, I didn't need to climb on the top to say, hear me, I want to become a president. That's not my issue. My issue to make sure that a youth, every youth, has got, is proud of his country. He can dream of going to school, to the university, and dream of having a job. When I was growing up, I didn't need to think that I'm going to be jobless. I sat in a classroom, paid by the government from grade one up to university. When I walked out of there, the job was waiting for me. So are these people who are leading right up now? The president is almost my age. We are almost the same. He enjoyed what I enjoyed. Why can he not install the same stuff that he enjoyed? He cannot tell us to say we are too many. No, there's lack of planning. And I say... But obviously, so, President, you, know, you, you, you cannot agree the fact that the current administration, or maybe administrations before, have indeed created an enabling environment for <laughs> entrepreneurs to thrive. I'll give an example of yourself. You're a very successful businessman right here in our country. Yes. I think the reason why you're successful is not because... Uh, it's, it's not by magic. It's because the environment in which you are living in and operating your businesses... Is, 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 is enabling. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't want to take myself no, as but, but an example. Let, I think let, I want to be as it's realistic. Not enabling. It's not enabling. I want to be as realistic it's as possible. It's not enabling, and I'll answer you. I'll answer you that. Movie TV, that's what you want. If you go there, I will say, because I'm being interviewed by the Zambian people. Let me tell them. We were the first people to develop the, 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 the digital migration with everything. When we applied for the, for the license, they said no. At the same time that I had everything, machinery, everything bought here, they allowed uh, Gold TV to operate. We, to operate for three years without a license. Could I have operated? They sent policemen here. So what, who is who? I'm a Zambian. I was the first one. They allowed a South African. Perhaps because his pocket was fat. I didn't have a pocket for, for, for paying people. It's my country. I needed that service. We were the first one. And I, up to now, I say there is no one in this country who knows television better than myself, inside out. So when that was happening, there was a Zambian which was you guys at Movie TV, and there was a South African, a Zambian 
was they just didn't give you. You had everything. When we asked, there are letters here. If you go to your boss here, there are letters. We wrote to, to IBA, to the Minister of Education. Why are you allowing uh, Go TV to operate for three years? Minister of Information, you mean? Both Minister of Information, IBA as well. Mm. We wrote to them. And they answered. The letters are here with your boss. Go and consult. They said, this one was saying, go and ask this. This one says, go and ask this. They kept on. But in the meantime, a Go TV, who is a foreigner, who are suffering money from Zambia to Mauritius every day, they operated for three years in this country using public funds because wherever they went in the country, they used mass, which belongs to ZNBC, which is yours and mine because we are the ones who own it. The public stuff. So, can you call that a leveled? You asked me, I didn't want to talk about it. Is that being leveled? No. It's not Zambia for Zambians. Because if it was Zambia for Zambians, as I'm talking right up now, a lot of Zambians would be up. There are lots of Zambians that are, are, are suffering. They can't even get a piece of land. A Chinese comes will get a piece of land. I will tell you another thing. If you see around Lusaka, most of the pieces of land around Lusaka they were given to white people to farm. These white people, they have turned those pieces of land into residential and, is, and, and asking for a lot of them money from Zambians. A foreigner comes here, is given a piece of land for free, he transmits that land into something that he sells and he becomes a millionaire. There are a lot of them. You know them. They know them. Which country have you seen? Why not let the Zambians have those pieces of land? Why not let the Zambians debarkate those? By the way, even the law does not allow that. But it's happening. As we are saying no to it. If you didn't do a thing in the right manner, the law needs to visit you. But it's happening. There are a lot of white people around Chisamba. Just go outside. Even the former president, uh, uh, Mr. Rupia Banda, that piece of land where he built, they had to go and buy from a white man to say to pass a good land. With the land which belongs to a Zambia, mm. the government has to buy. Two very important questions, uh, President Nyerenda. Um, already there are people that are working in the civil service, but obviously one of the issues that we get almost on a daily basis in the news is uh, they are protesting for improved you know, working conditions, improved services in terms of working conditions. What will you do? when you are in government to ensure that uh, working conditions for civil servants are improved. Uh, but also, what is one particular sector you're looking at uh, from, from, from your blueprint as NAREP mm. uh, to ensure that more people get captured as soon as possible, the first five years from 2021 mm. uh, to, 20, to, to 2026? What, what, what is one particular sector you're looking at that this mm. is our key sector to ensure that we consume you, much of the people you, that you are employed? Uh, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Mansa, um, I've talked about the three, four sectors. Four sectors, four pillars. Four pillars, yes. You don't need to leave another pillar down and so on. The best, uh, the, the best visionary leader will have people working in all these areas at the same time. That means you let people who are experts in notar look at notar, expert in intellectual property, look at intellectual property, expert in the service industry, look in production of goods and services, let them go there. So you have everything together. You have a plan. Then there you can say now, I'm going to end it like this, like this, like this, like this. I will employ man, people like that, like that, like that. So in the first year or second year or third year, I'm able to absorb this. In the fourth year, fifth year, and so on and, and so on. And so on. But uh, 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 your question was, um, how am I going to look at To it? improve the working conditions. The working conditions, yes. You see... I want to um, put this question in conjunction with corruption, but uh, let me answer it on its own. First of all, if you are not going to pay a civil servant his right uh, remuneration, if you are not going to pay him in time, the civil servant is going to steal. There are two types 
of people that I want to. There is the corruption with the, uh, uh, in the political world and co corruption in the civil service. The dangerous one, and in fact all of them they are dangerous, terrible. But you have got corruption in the civil service which is the, becomes the, a, a, a system. And if you employ a system of, 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 of stealing or of doing whatever you are doing in a, in, a, in, in a transaction or in that society, you have more danger. Because that becomes a system and it grows up and up and up. So they know if you there's a budget of 10 billion, they know, okay, this 10 billion, we know 5 billion, guys, it goes to these things, these things. It happens every now and then. Same processes are happening. Same PSS and their directors and all the people, it happens every now and then. Whereas the politicians, they are actually, you know, a politician cannot do certain things without uh, 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 the civil servant. Certain things. If, for example, I am going to, to, to give, a, 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 like what I talked about, the, the, guy, the, 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 the Go TV, they operate without a, um, a license. The first thing the permanent secretary will question it, will, I will write a letter to say, wait a minute, these guys cannot operate. Then comes a politician, he just picks a phone. Uh, I think give them a chance. Finish. That's the biggest corruption that you will see. Then the civil servant, whether it's a permanent secretary or director, he sees, okay, this is normal. So once the, the civil servant does it, the politician can also not question him. Mm. It goes on and on. The rest I don't need to, to say it. You know what is happening. But when I, I, I want to come back again to certain things that are happening in this world. In Zambia, current examples that are happening. When I was talking about job creation, right up now, there are two examples that I want to give before I go any further. I want to give an example of Marco Polo, Taos making. And obviously, you're about to answer my question too, on how you're going to improve the living standards of those civil servants that are already working. Uh, I think I have said it, although perhaps. He, uh, it was, let me be very direct. Please. The first thing is that when we have more money from the things that I explained, we have more people working. Every Zambian has got a job. There will be more income. We can translate our, our products into, through creativity and earn more money from agriculture, from, um, uh, from uh, the mining sector, from other processing industry. We have more money. That means we can pay more. More, more, more. But, but, more, but, but let, realistically let speaking, realistically speaking. We can pay more yeah. and, uh, and pay in time. Mm. And I want to give you this example. If a policeman, a policeman who today, I don't know, perhaps he gets 5,000 kwacha, you upgrade his salary, say to 10,000 kwacha. Mm. And the policeman is also given incentives. He can go and borrow money, and the government gives a guarantee to to buy a car. He can borrow money to buy a house. He can do all these other things and the government gives a guarantee. The guy has got all these incentives. He can take his children to school because he's earning and so on and so on. Do you think that that policeman will compromise his job with the 20,000 that he does today? Obviously he not. Obviously not. If, if, obviously yeah. not. Mm. Do you think that the immigration guy who compromise his job there because of $200 that they are given or 1000 that they are given by these Chinese who are coming in. No, he will not. He will think twice. When well, I lose my job... Fair I'm enough, President, fair enough President Nirenda. But look, when you form government in 2021, President Nirenda, you are finding I'm, I'm a mountain of debt. Question, yes, you've, you've, you've answered, answered my question, right? yes. Okay. You're finding a mountain of debt, President Nirenda, when you form government in 2021. Uh, we have debt in excess of $18.5 billion that is yes. both in, you know, a domestic and external debt. Yes. Even though you increase production so that you give more, more, you know, more money to civil servants, mm. at that time you'll be looking at money to pay 
uh, the people that you borrowed money from. Yes. And so, is it realistic enough, President Nyanda, for you to tell us that when you form government in mm -hmm. 2021, you'll be looking at increasing salaries of civil servants? Really? First of all, Mr. Mansa, I will answer this question by giving you an example, and then I'll come and answer it directly. If I don't ask me, I will answer it exactly. Go ahead. If I borrow from you, as my friend, I borrow, say, a thousand or two thousand kwacha. I, I, the time has elapsed and things like that. I come, I'm not working. I don't have anything I can sell and so on and so on. You come, I say, oh, man, I'll give you tomorrow. To come, I'll give you tomorrow. You ask me, Bwana, where are you going to get the money from? Next, you take me to the police, right? Of course. But if I come, I come to you to say, I'm not able to pay, but this month I'm collecting my rentals from my house. I will get a pay of perhaps 5,000. I will pay you uh, half of the money this month. Next, I'll pay you another. You will believe me. You will give me a benefit of doubt. Now I come back to your question. As a government, there's also nothing else other than that. Take a much stick. Multiply it by so much, it is going to explode even this house. What happens is that there must be a leadership with credibility, a leadership with a vision, where you go to the people to say, what we are going to do ourselves, we are going to earn so much money from the agricultural sector, so much money from the production of goods and services, so much money from the mining. We have already talked to people who are who have signed contract with. This is our timeline. This is how we are going to pay. So allow us, allow us to have time to look at, to relook at this. If you, <coughs> you are a person of credibility, they will let you. If you are that person who has got nothing, who tells you, I don't know, they will take you to the police, as I said. And the police, they may take that thing and sell it to venture funding. And tomorrow you have people who are coming as people are talking. People are outside there in the social media, don't dwell on social media. They are there saying, no, Zambia has sold this, Zambia has told the Chinese have picked that, and so on and so on. But those things do happen in reality. If you don't have the same little thing that I explained, it does happen at the national level. But uh, uh, Mr. Mansa, Zambia is a very young country in terms of population. With 20 million people, and a, a lot of these people, more than 50%, they are young people. The people that you really, really need to govern and be, they are less than 10 million. Now I want to compare with countries like Nigeria, where you have 200 million people. It becomes difficult. And the more people we become, the more complex it is. But what did you see in Zambia with our leadership? It's the insults. Be it from the, uh, the, the ruling party or some private uh, parties, uh, uh, opposition parties, they are insults. That's why I said when I began, I am an amateur in insults, mm. in tribalism, in hate, in all these visionary and uh, non-visionary uh, opposition. I'm an amateur, but I am a person, I'm a heavyweight when it comes in product, providing leadership that is going to make this country. That is going to make sure that this country is going to be prosperous. And I ask Zambians, the day that I'm going to take over this country, give me 10 years, this country is going to be more than uh, South Africa. And I can tell you, it's going to be more than Dubai, mm. where yeah. you go to shop. Well, uh, you, you, you all been telling us, uh, PF was also telling us that lo this country looks like Los Angeles. But um, they, they are not telling you, you know that that's a lie, right? Because uh, uh, the, the tallest building in this country is still, which was built by Kaunda, 20 stories, right? <laughs> it's still there. But I now, how do you tell me that it looks like Los Angeles, Los Angeles, which has got and Just yesterday, President uh, Nyerenda. Uh, 40 stories, what and what yeah. buildings. Just and yesterday, you, President Nyerenda. You Yerenda. can't stand up and dream like that. Just yesterday. You know, it's, it's, it makes me feel... <laughs> it's free to dream, by the way. It, no, that's what, but you don't dream when you are on the top. When, it, when I cannot dream when I dream in front of my children, my children will take it for gospel truth. 
you were asking me. So yeah, by the way, President Nyerenda, you, you did highlight to us on how you easily got a job after you graduated uh, from campus. Uh, let, let me remind you that the highest learning institution in the, in the country, the University of Zambia, just is it two days ago, yesterday, uh, did announce the results for the final years. That means that thousands of unemployed graduates are still going to be in society, right? I would like to understand uh, from your end point in terms of the policy that you have for fresh graduates that are going to graduate from different universities that we have and different colleges, is there, is there going to be you know, a special package for them? Like, you, like the government of the Republic of Zambia provided for you where you had a, a chance to be employed when you formed government in 2021. How, how would Zambia look you, like, you know, especially for fresh graduates? It may I feel so proud that every gradual, graduate, before he leaves the university, you will have a job. You know what is going on right up in this country? You, in this country, it's, it's like we have, we are at standstill in terms of thinking. We are at standstill. Somebody was telling me this, and I'll share with you. He says, uh, you know, uh, Mr. President, a Zambian, that chicken, the chicken, kill a chicken, you prepare it perhaps in three. You will fry it, you will boil it, and you will push it in and roast it. In, and roast it. Right? Mm. So, and the flavor is almost the same. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's almost the same. Of course. Now go to an Indian chap, you will have perhaps 20 meals from the same chicken, and they all taste different. What do you call that? Creativity. This is what I talked about when I started the four. I said there's, we need to be creative in every sector. Create. Definitely now, you will say, oh, let me test this, let me test this, until you test all the 20. In this, ti this time, the guy there, the entrepreneur, is making money. More money than me, who has got only three menus from the chicken. Now, another chicken, let me stay on chicken. You go to hungry lion there, you kill like whatever. To Kentucky fried chicken. Please. And that chicken, it comes from South Africa. Already cut, already sorted. And it comes and our government is looking. They don't understand that that's a job. Because even a guy from the university who has done business and administration, he can start in there. A guy from the university, he can start the processing. A guy from the university will get employment from there. A guy from the university, he will start uh, farming other areas, other, other things, whether it's spices and so on and so on. By the way, you know that we have rubber here. There's a lot of rubber trees all over. But who uses them? Rubber, you make so many things. There's so many different types of rubber. But we are not creative. We are not an creative industry. Now, uh, as we are talking like that, let me say even this. Uh, uh, now, you see, within the, this month, cement has been increased, right? Of course. But, but and the end, increased. Again, and the, 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 vice, the vice president was asked in public. Yeah, I think you even hit the nail on its head, President Yerenda. My question again was, annually, President Yerenda, thousands of graduates have been offloaded on the job market, yes. all right? Uh, Where are you going to take these, your children, when you form government in 2021? I have explained to you, and I will explain now, in a little, in step by step. Every district of Zambia will have processing industries. Every district. It's not Lusaka, that's what I'm telling them. We will have, you can't have cotton being grown, uh, Kuchipata is brought here. Maize is grown in Chipata is brought here. You mean they can't grind maize there and, and make pop, popcorns and so on and so on? Popcorns are coming from maize. They can do everything there. So we are going to make sure that we have processing industry everywhere. And this industry are going to absorb. Now, I talked about the chicken. I will remain with the chicken. Now, 
I'm going to process the chicken. Uh, and uh, just in your answer, President Nyonda, yes. I, I want you to, to, to bring us back on how it was when you were growing up after you graduated. You did tell us that a job was waiting for you. Yes. All right. And now, just this year, just this month, thousands have graduated from the University of Zambia and, and other colleges. How will jobs be waiting for them? And what criteria that, will you use to ensure that as they graduate, there's already a job waiting for them? That's my yes, question. Yes, this is what I'm telling you. Let me explain. Let me explain. The, the cotton that you are seeing will be processed here. It needs a guy also from the university. Once you process cotton into material, they will need designers. You have people from the university. The peanut butter that we are going to be creative and make so many types of peanut butter. So there is a farmer, there is a processing industry and so on. The drinks, these drinks. Now, I want to tell you this. This is why people are missing it. All most of these guys who are making these drinks, do you know what they do? They import sugar, they import this already made drink or sweeteners and come here just add water. Those are jobs that we are going to make here. If you want to make, to continue with your drink industry, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying it to the industry there, if you are going to continue with making drink industry, you have to process your fruits from here. They are importing. This stuff is importing. They just add water here. That means a farmer is South African. A processor of that is South African. Here is the people who just come and get water and do the marketing. Those are jobs for the guy who has graduated today. We had it in Kaunda. Mm. Already in that area where we are saying that uh, the, the way I applauded the, the uh, President Lungu that he's grabbed the mines. The school of mines will get jobs there. There will be accountants getting jobs there. But what we want to see is how are they going to do this? That's the question. The, re, the, 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 the recept is mm. in the how. Mm. If they handle it properly, that is going to employ a lot of Zambians. Even suppliers. They are going to come from there. And that's what we are going to do. Just a button. These buttons, we don't produce them here. A guy from the university can take up that job. Cotton. Cotton is a Need to yija. Munch sticks. And so on and so on. Sure. And, and these will be jobs created by the government of the Republic of Zambia, no. not the private sector. No, 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 no. Those are the jobs that are created by the private sector. The private sector should run the economy. The problem in Africa is that politicians think they can run everything. Politicians think they should mix themselves in the, in the economy. And that's the problem of Africa. West Zambia. You want to have your fingers in all these other things. You must just do your not notariate job. Facilitate mm. and monitor and put regulations. And let those but certainly those in the private sector should be Zambians. Yes. Right. The, the, as I explained from the four sectors, they are Zambians. If you don't use Zambians, those people will take the money. Me, I talk about myself also. Immediately I graduated, I got a job. And when I got a job in Europe, all everything that I was doing, I was sending to my country to make sure I build an empire here. I never left it in Germany. This is what the people here are doing also, foreigners. Everything that they are earning, even exploiting us, is going back to their countries. We know, we know one big guy who is, who is running some of the Emirates has got all those hotels in his country where he's coming from. And we know, the intelligence knows, the president knows, everybody knows. Those hotels should be here. That money should be in this country. But we go and even give him more. If they, it means, I should think like that. Mm. Mr. Mwansa, if I'm going to give you a job from my company, you, I go with another one, another one, you will employ also other Zambians. And the money will remain here. We don't have the money coming here. The chickens that I talked about, the money remains in South Africa. The mines that we are talking about, these things are sold in Europe and the money remains there. Even expatriates who come to work here, they are paid outside there. 
That's why I applaud. If a Zambian is employed here, the money will be paid here, and the culture is going to get better. Because they are suffering our money and sending it to the so-called experts who are not experts. They learn jobs from our own people. Our own engineers, they tell that guy who is an expert, but that guy is earning millions and millions and they are stored outside this country. It's unfair. And that's what we are saying. For Zambia to operate and be itself, we must first of all love ourselves. I start, you know, when I came back from Japan, the first thing I started was music. There was no music in this country when I came. It was Congolese music. And I told a lot of people, give me 10 years, everyone will be listening to Zambian music. 10 years in the club. I spent a lot of money inside there, bought equipment, promoted all these musicians. Today, they are from there. I went to invest in video production. All these things that you are seeing on Zambezi Magic and things like that, ask anybody from there. They were trained from these hands. They are from here. Producers, what? Name them. That's development. But what is it? It's a brand drain. I saw one day the president calling this, and there you can see in social media, he called them there. But he did not recognize what is behind. That's where the problem is. If he starts what is behind, these things that we have, they can mushroom everywhere. You don't need only to promote Lusaka. Promote Mansa, Kasama, Choma, Mongu, uh, uh, Solowezi, and so on and so on. You will see the company, country emerging. But not you, you think Lusaka is Zambia? Mm. There are problems mm. in this country. Yep. You build these bridges. By the way, there's another thing that is moving around in social media. I think the president was actually helping to make Zambia clean. First of all, I laughed. I want to laugh. And my laughter is this. First of all, that drainage should not have accumulated that dirty if there was planning. Two, the president really, I commend him, I went with the people to do it. And in that video, somebody says, moon to Aleomba, and the president is laughing, coming up to say, and tumbi to letalika. It hurts me. I'm a Zambian, and it hurts me. And what we are doing, all opposition, we are not enemies of this government. We are friendly forces. We want to help. We want to help him. He shouldn't make us a joke. No. We have got brains like he has, and we can do it. But you can't have a president who stands on a podium and disrespects his people. That's not fair. Mm. It's not but, but, fair. But let's get to um, you know women in Kalingalinga, women in deep areas of this country that sell tomatoes, sell chicken, sell these small, small things to earn an income. And they're watching you and listening to you tonight, President Yerenda, and they're asking a question of how will we expand our business uh, when you form government? Is there any special uh, program, especially for the women, for the youth that are into small, you know, uh, in, in, that are into entrepreneurship, that are selling these small, small things? How will, they, how will you create an environment that will ensure that, you yes. know, they boom? You know, uh, I was on radio the other time. I think people do not understand, and I laughed about it, where I said, I said, you know, um, uh, when I look at this development of the markets and they are patting themselves on the back, it's not right. Don't develop the markets. Develop processing industries. That's what we are going to do. We will put all this money in processing industry. That will process that tomato. That will process that chikanda into something that is more and even to the export. You know chikanda is a very powerful product, but again no creativity. Is being sold like that. We can co commercialize chikanda and many more of our foodstuffs. You cannot save Nshima for 100 years, you are saving it the same way. Be creative, change, make other products, and so on and so on, and sell them. So that woman in Karingalinga for us, he will have a job. She will have a job, a job with the processing industry. Instead of her sitting in front of Tomato 25, and selling and make sure that at the end of the day she goes home with five quarter. She will have a job. That tomato will go in the industry. That maize will go in the industry. That onion will go in the industry. Those other things that these markets will have what we call a, a farmer's market. Farmer's market are there. 
and they will issue these things. These women, all of them, they will have a job. When I say a job of every Zambian, I mean it. And that's a song of Narep. That's a song that we are saying, we are going to give a job to every Zambian. Because those jobs are going to be created in every industry, in every district. And we are going to make millionaires in every district that are going to make these processing companies. And they will absorb the people. And as they absorb the people, they will have more money and make more. Millionaires throughout the world are created. They are deliberately created. If I create you today as a millionaire, you are going to create other companies and mm. absorb people. You know, this is, look at the, um, people like Dangote still will continue paying homage to Obasanjo because Dangote has been made a millionaire by people like uh, 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 Obasanjo, President Obasanjo. This is how it works. This government should have deliberately, in all these districts, create one, two, three millionaires. Then you can afford. When you have problems, you will call those guys, hey guys, wait a minute. The country has got these problems. The country made you what you are. I'm going to sleep. By the time I wake out, I wake up, I want to find this problem sorted out. That's how it works. Why do you think today they are saying Merkel? Merkel is the chancellor as she has been the chancellor of German for 18 years, if I'm not mistaken. 18 years. She has just thrown in a towel. They say she's the best president or chancellor ever in the world. What do you think she does? She calls those people, here is a problem, me, I'm going to sleep. She wakes up, that problem is sorted out. Lastly, President Nyerend, I think you, you are very passionate about you know, creating millionaires. And yes, for people, I mean. that, that, people that might have heard this uh, particular f you know, phrase from you for the very first time, maybe yes. in your closing remarks, explain to the Zambian people how you intend to create these millionaires that you talk about every time yes. you appear on media. How will you create millionaires, President Very Nyerend? simple. Very simple. I'll, I can take any sector. I can take it. Let's take the agricultural sector. The agricultural sector. Or perhaps let's go to mining, because I've talked so much about agriculture. All right. Let's go to mining. Zambia has got 99.9% .9 pure copper. Right? Mm. I would surf on a product like an electric car. An electric car, it needs most of the ingredients is copper and the batteries. Batteries you make from cobalt. Uh, 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 cobalt, lithium, and and uh, is it nickel? You make that's where you make from. So these are the things we have made batteries before. Copper we have. So I'm going to say, twenty people, third or hundred people will come together, and this is their job. Now we will have a door being made in Chipata, a handle door handle being made in Mansa. The wipers being made in, 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 in Choma. All the little, the seats being made in Solowezi. These are people that we are going to empower. Now, once that is made, we will say we will go now to the banks to say, look, this is the plan. We want to be producing so many vehicles. This is our market. Can you give these people money? Us as a government we will remain with the two jobs. One, to make sure that we give you a guarantee for the money that you are going to borrow. Two, we are going to help you make markets. Three, we are going to protect the industry to make sure that we are not going to import these cars. Just like that. For a couple of years. We are also going to make sure that every civil servant who buys that car that is made in Zambia is given uh, uh, tax incentives is given some incentives. So we will have all civil servants buying the cars. All government institutions will use the cars. Those that want to import, they can import, but with a very high duty. Have I explained? Mm. And the, all these people that we give, just from the car, a seat, the wiper, indicator, the windmill, and so on and so on, all over. These are guys who are going to become millionaires. Now, when they become millionaires, they will invest in other sectors. 
and they will come from district to district. I can go to another product. No, I think <laughs> you've given us a picture, President Nyerenda. Yes. I wish you nothing but the best ahead of the elections on the 12th of August 2021. Unless you have uh, one last word for the people of Zambia. Zambia is for Zambians. I say I'm the best guy to, to run, uh, to create the leadership that is going to transform Zambia into something better. Well, there you have it. We've been speaking about job creation under the NAREP, and my guest has been, uh, was President of the National Restoration Party, uh, Stephen Nyerenda. My name is Andrew Mwanza. Thank you so much to my director and producer, Mavuto Piri, for now. See you again on Sunday at exactly 1935.